And then we're going to go to Second Chronicles 15, and I'd ask the ushers to be ready. Uh, after, at some point during the service, I'm going to ask that we give out uh, this, these uh, pages that I have up here in this folder, and then also that we give out the calendars in the middle of this service. So if you would, just be on standby, please. We'll do that here as a part of the service this morning. Second Chronicles chapter number 7, verse number 14 I think every Christian here, I think you would agree with me that our country needs revival. Our country needs uh, uh, the hand of God upon it again. We need a fresh, a fresh breath of God upon us. We need the Spirit of God moving upon us. Uh, I think there are a lot of things we've seen in the last year in our culture, in our country, that truly are beyond uh, beyond the hope of man. They're beyond uh, electing a, a, the right person uh, to fix it all. I think we've seen a lot of things that show us, our culture as a whole, that we just need uh, an intervention from God. That's what we need. We need something from heaven that only God can do. We need another great awakening. By the way, this would not be the first time in America's history that America's needed a great awakening. Uh, and God has provided it before, and He can do it again. And as a matter of fact, God works very well in those times when people think it's impossible for revival to happen. God loves those times because He gets the credit. He gets the glory. And I want to say this. God can bring us revival again if, and there's a big word, if we will follow God's prescription for revival. This verse, verse we're going to read, Second Chronicles 7.14, starts with that word if. What does that mean? It means it's contingent upon God's people obeying this. You see, we have a choice to make as God's people. We have a choice to make. The Bible says, 2 Chronicles 7.14, If my people... Now, who are God's people? Those are Christians. People who are saved. If you're, if you're saved, you know it for sure without a doubt. Would you raise your hand? You say, I know I'm saved. Praise the Lord. Then this is who it's talking to. My hand's up. It's talking to us. You know, we can look at everything going on in our nation and say, Boy, I wish, I wish this crowd would get right and stop practicing what they practice. But God didn't say if the unsaved crowd gets right. That's not what He said. He didn't say, hey, if the, uh, the abortion doctor stops committing murder and stops ab uh, aborting babies. He didn't say that. He didn't say, hey, if, if these, uh, uh, this uh, same-sex marriage crowd would stop touting their stuff and pushing it down the throats of, of Americans, if they would stop that, then there'd be revival. That's not what God said. He said, if my people... Again, if you're saved, raise your hand. Well, that's who He's talking to. If my people, which are called by my name... What does Christian mean? It means little Christ. It actually was first given to us as a derogatory name. They'd say, oh, look, at there's those Christians, those little Christ. They're just little Jesuses. Hey, what a great compliment. If people said, you know what, you're a Christian, I can tell it. I've said before, and you've heard this before, if you were put on trial and they wanted to find you guilty of being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Would your, would your lost world, would the, the co-workers at work be able to say, yeah, that guy's a Christian, I know it without a doubt. Would, would your neighbor be able to say, I know that guy's a Christian. If my people, which are called by my name, look at what it says, shall humble themselves. Shall humble themselves. You know, prayerlessness is a sure sign of pridefulness. When we think of pride, here's what we think of. We think of somebody with their nose stuck up in the air that looks down on everybody and just thinks they're, they're uh, better than sliced bread. They just think they're great. And they look down on everybody and, boy, they're, they're the greatest. That's what we think of when we think of pride. But if you read through Scripture, really what pride is, is when you think, hey, I don't really need God's help in my life. I mean, you may not even have your nose up in the air, but if you're living your life prayerlessly, without prayer, without dependent upon God, you're living your life pridefully. Because what you're saying is, God, I don't need you. God, I don't need your direction from your word to make my decisions. Lord, I, I've, got it, I've got it myself. I don't need your help. That's pride. Prayerlessness is a sure sign of pridefulness. And God said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. That's the first prerequisite. And pray. This year, for the first time, we started, or this year on a regular basis, we started our prayer meetings on Wednesday nights. Those prayer meetings are not just another time to hear the Word of God, though we do that. They're also a time where corporately as a church we get together and pray. Why? Because we need to pray. 
We need to pray. We need prayer warriors. We need to understand that prayer is not about uh, somebody seeing me pray. It's not wrong to pray in public, but prayer is not a, it's not a, a presentation. I know somebody doesn't understand scriptural prayer if I pray for them and they go, Oh, well, that was a beautiful prayer. That, that kind of bothers me. You know why it bothers me? Because I wasn't trying to make it a beautiful prayer. I wasn't trying to present anything. I wasn't trying to perform. Prayer is talking to God. Just like you'd talk to a friend. Just like you'd talk to a parent. That's what prayer is. And God said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Let me ask you a question. Do you pray? Do you pray? We don't need to read more books about how to pray. We need to pray. We don't need to understand the ins and outs of how to pray as much. We, we, yeah, we need that. But we just need to pray. John R. Rice used to say, all our failures are prayer failures. Listen, uh, is the only time you pray when you sit down for lunch at work, and when you do that, do you fake? Do you pretend you're not praying? You know, you ever seen somebody do that? They go like this. They sit down at the cafeteria, and they go, they look this way, they look that way, they get their sandwich, and they go, oh, man, I got a headache, I got a headache. Lord, thank you for this food. Bless it to my body. Amen. Is that the only time you pray? Is that the only time? I've been in services. You've probably been in services like this, too. I'm going to set somebody up here, so be careful if I ask you to pray up here. But I've been in services where somebody will say, a pastor will say, well, Brother so and so, would you pray for us? And he'll stand up and he'll say, oh, Lord, thank you for the food. Uh, uh, Lord, bless this service, I pray. <laughs> you can tell he's just starting to pray with the thing he always prays. Lord, thank you for the food. Bless it to our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you pray? Do you pray? God said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Our theme for this year, 2016, is seek His face. What does it mean to seek the face of God? I've said this often. I have six children. I have one in heaven, five here on earth. And what happens when your children, they'll color you a nice picture. They'll, they'll spend a lot of time. They'll think about you. And they'll color this picture. And especially when they're real little, sometimes you'll look at it and you'll go, oh, that's uh, nice. Uh, what is that? You know? <laughs> or you say, boy, I like that dog. That's a fish, Dad. Oh, I like that fish. <laughs> a dog fish. It looks like a dog fish. And, but, but they hand you this sheet. They hand you this picture. And then what do they do? What do they look at? They look at your face. Why do they look at your face? Because they want to see if you're pleased. You ever watch when you give somebody a gift at Christmas time? Or when somebody gives you a gift? Where do they look? When they give you a gift, what do they do? They look at your what? They look at your face. Why? They want to see if you're pleased. You know what it means to seek God's face? It means to look at God's face and see if He's pleased. That's what it means. It doesn't say if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek one another's faces. That's what most people do. What most people do is they come into church and they say, hey, is brother so-and-so pleased? Is sister so-and-so pleased? Hey, is that person pleased with me? Is that person pleased with me? God said, I don't want that. What I want is you to look at my face and see if I'm pleased. How do you see if God is pleased? Look in the Word of God. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Now who is this talking to? God's people. He said, my people have wicked ways. He said, if they'll turn, if my people will turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Who does the revival depend upon? It depends on God's people following God's program. Let's bow our heads together. Lord, I pray that you'll fill me with your spirit as I preach your word. Lord, on this Vision Sunday, as we talk about the new year, Lord, as we look forward, we, we look back to what You've done and just we give You praise and credit and glory. And then, Lord, we look forward to what You're going to do this year. I pray that You'll direct our thoughts the next few minutes. Lord, give us wisdom. Open our hearts, Lord, above all this year. Help us to seek Your face. Help us, Lord, not to be satisfied with just some outward goals and some marks that we're shooting towards, that we can reach those goals. Help us, Lord, to be satisfied when You are satisfied. Help us to be satisfied when You are truly happy with our lives. Help us, Lord, to seek Your face this year. To see revival, Lord. We need You. I beg You in this service, fill me with Your Spirit. Lord, if there is someone here today that doesn't know You as Savior, may they trust You today. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Now turn your Bibles, please. You're still in Second Chronicles. I want to look at an example of a king that sought God's face. Look at Second Chronicles, chapter number 15. Second Chronicles, chapter number 15. There was a good godly king named Asa. And if you look back in verse 14, Asa, or chapter 14, Asa is reigning as the king. And in chapter 14, the Bible says in verse 9, Zero the Ethiopian, with an host of a thousand thousand, a million man army, came against Asa and wanted to destroy him. They set the battle in array, the Bible says. Verse 11, And Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on Thee, and in Thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, Thou art our God, let not man prevail against Thee. Listen, the odds were stacked against Asa, but not when you have God on your side. And Asa understood that by faith, and he said, Lord, we need Your help. And God gave them help, verse 13, so the Lord, verse 12, so the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. God gave them a great victory. But now notice, when God gave them a great victory, Asa didn't go back to his old ways. He didn't go back and say, well, God, I got past that one, that big trial in life. Now, Lord, I want to forget about you again. That's what a lot of people do. They get into a tough time. They get into a tough place. And they make all these promises to God. And then when God gets them out of the tough time and out of the tough place, they forget about God. But that's not what Asa did. Asa continued to seek the Lord. Look at 2 Chronicles 15, verse 1. The Bible says, And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. And if ye seek him, notice the if, if ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. What does James say? It says, Draw nigh to God. And He will draw an eye to you. Draw an eye to God. He'll draw an eye to you. Listen, God wants to be close to every one of us. God wants to be close. God wants you to experience personal revival this year. The question is, do you want God to be close to you? Do you want that personal revival? Are you willing to seek God's face? Now notice what Israel had been without. Verse 3. Now for a long season, a long time, Israel had been, number one, without the true God. You know, there are a lot of false gods that people look to, that people worship, that people depend on. And I'm not just talking about little idols. There are gods of materialism. People look to their money and their stuff and their jobs and their things to make them happy, to give them fulfillment in life. Man, for a long time, Israel had been without the true God. You know, there are a lot of churches and false preachers who preach a, a false gospel. They don't preach what the Word of God says. They, they preach a, a social gospel that tells people what they want to hear and makes them feel good in their sin. But that's not the true God. That's not the true Word of God. The Bible says Israel had been without the true God. They'd been without the true God. And notice, and without a teaching priest. They had been without somebody to tell them the truth. Uh, they had been filled with people, as Paul said in the book of Timothy, who would just scratch their itch when they had a spiritual itch. You know what we ought to do when we come to church? Listen, as a preacher, and I say this, I, I believe this before as a pastor, and I believe it now that I am a, a pastor. When we come to church, we shouldn't say, come on, preacher, impress me. Come on, preacher, make me laugh. Is there anything wrong with making you laugh? No. But you shouldn't come to church just for entertainment value. Can I promise you something? You're not going to get much from here anyway. <laughs> entertainment value. But that's what a lot of people do. They come to church for entertainment value. It's spiritual entertainment. And they go home and they don't listen. They don't obey anything they heard from the Word of God. They just said, boy, the preacher was funny today. Oh boy, that was a lot of fun. You know, we had great. I'm not against fun. I'm not against funny. But listen, when you come to the house of God, what you ought to come and say is, Lord, please give me from Your Word what I need today. And if you'll pray that, God will give it to you. Now, sometimes it'll hurt. Sometimes God will step on your toes. Not me. It's not me. These aren't my words. I'm preaching God's words. And sometimes it'll prick your heart, and that's good. That's the Holy Spirit of saying, uh, Holy Spirit saying, listen, here's an area you need to work on in your life. Listen, he said for a long time they had, they'd been without the true God and without a teaching priest. They'd been out without somebody who would tell them the truth. Notice next, and without law. They had been without the Word of God. 
You know what they had heard when, when they heard preaching before? They just heard life experiences and humor and things that entertain them, but that's not what helps us. You know what helps us? You know what truly will transform our lives is the Word of God. And they had been without law. But notice verse 4, But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought Him, He was found of them. When they sought His face, when they said, Lord, are You happy with my life? Lord, are You happy with my family? Lord, are You happy with my commitment to You? Lord, are, are You happy with my heart? You see, we can get satisfied with putting on an outward facade that appeals to man and neglecting the heart that only God sees. That's what the Pharisees did in the New Testament and Jesus had His harshest words for them. He said, listen, He said, you're like graves. He said, outwardly, you appear to men to be beautiful, but inwardly, He said, you're full of dead men's bones. He said, you're like a cup that somebody washed the outside of the cup, but they didn't wash the inside. How many of you would like to go to somebody's house and, and, uh, and you found out happily that they washed the outside of their cup but not the inside and they were offering you drink from it? How many of you would like that? Of course not. So, oh, I, don't, I don't want that. that that's my, my favorite. You've heard I love cold water. How many of you know about cold water? Uh, I'll tell you about cold water again. Uh, this young man went to visit his uncle way out in the country and his uncle uh, didn't have hot water. He just had cold running water and he went there and his uncle was there and uh, they were eating breakfast and he noticed there was a little bit of egg stuck on his plate still, some old egg that had been hardened on the plate. And a little bit of grime on the other side. And he, he said, Uncle, he goes, he goes, I'm, he goes I'm not sure, did, did you wash this plate? And he goes, oh yeah. He goes, it's, it's as clean as cold water will get it. I said, okay, great. He ate lunch and he sat down and sure enough there was a fork and there was a little bit of something still stuck on the fork. He turned it over, a little something on the back side for later. And he, 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 said, he said, Uncle, are you sure you washed this? He goes, yeah, it's as good as cold water and get it. Dinner time came around and he sat down again. There was a plate and he just couldn't stomach it anymore. There was just this film all over the plate. And he said, Uncle, he said, I, 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 man, do you, do you wash this plate? He goes, of course. He goes, it's as, cold as, it's as good and clean as cold water and get it. He goes, okay, well, I'm just not hungry, Uncle. I'm going to go to bed without supper. He goes, that's fine, no problem. He goes, let me have that plate. He said, cold water, come here, boy. And he put it down on the ground. <laughs> now, you'll never forget that now as you eat lunch today. <laughs> w would you accept that kind of plate to eat out of? Would you accept that kind of cup to eat out, to drink out of? Yet Jesus said, if you take care of the outside, but you don't take care of the inside, He said, you're like that cup. He said, you're washing the outside. So people will look and see and say, boy, that's clean, but inside it's dirty. Listen, don't be satisfied with letting the inside stay dirty. Let, get right with God this year. I mean, get right with God. Seek His face. Seek His face. The Bible says, verse 4, when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel. That's what repentance is. It's a turn. It's a change of mind. It's you were going this way and you turned. And you said, alright Lord, I'll go your way. That's repentance. That's what it means. When they turned unto the Lord God of Israel and sought Him, He was found of them. And in those times, there was no peace. You know what you'll have if you're not seeking the Lord? No peace. You know what you'll have if you're not walking with God and truly seeking His face in His Word? No peace. Why? Because peace can only come where Jesus rules and reigns. No peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in. But great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries, and nation was destroyed of nation, and city of city. For God did vex them with all adversity. And the word to Asa is, Be ye strong therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. And when Asa heard these words, and the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he took courage. What did he do? He started to clean house. And he put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin. Hey, are there any abominable idols in your house? What about in your heart? God's people need to turn from their wicked ways. And what did he do? He put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renewed the altar of the Lord. He began the real worship of God again. 
Listen, the Christian life isn't just all the things you don't do. It's a relationship with a real living Savior. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He's living whatever men may say. That's what Christianity really is. Christianity is a walk with Jesus Christ. Notice, He took and put away the abominable idols. He renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord. And He gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and out of Simeon. For they fell to Him out of Israel in abundance when they saw that the Lord His God was with Him. Look at verse 12. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. Verse 14, and they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting. Verse 15, and all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought Him with their whole desire. And He was found of them. And the Lord gave them rest round about. This year, 2016, our theme is seek His face. Would you seek the face of God this year? I mean, seek His face in your personal life. Would you say, Lord, I'm not going to be pleased until you're pleased with me? Would you seek His face in your family? God, I'm not going to be pleased until you're pleased with my family. Would you seek His face in your Christian commitment to the Lord? Lord, I'm not going to be satisfied unless you're satisfied. Would you seek His face? Listen, God promised revival. He promised to heal our land if His people called by His name will humble themselves and pray and seek His face and turn from their wicked way. God promised that. With that thought in mind, I want us to take a look this year at a couple of things. This is Vision Sunday. And I'd ask the ushers if you would help me please for a moment. If you would first, I want to give this, this sheet out. The sheet uh, Vision Sunday and also the calendars. If we could get two or three men to help here please. And uh, just feel free to jump in. That's great. Thank you. This first sheet, each year for Vision Sunday... Uh, we take time to outline uh, the, the things that we're looking to do this year. And again, last year we, we put several things on this list and God blessed and allowed us to do some things more than we had planned. Other things we're planning to start this year. So this is just an outline. But our, our goal is this. We, we, can, we can knock out, we can put a check mark by every one of these things. But what really matters this year, what really matters is that you personally seek God's face. That you personally Walk with the Lord. Again, we, we could check off all these things. But the Christian life isn't a checklist. We, we want to make sure we're right with God. If we accomplish all these things, but we're not seeking His face, we haven't accomplished a lot. We want to be seeking His face this year. I want to look first of all at the 2020 vision. Who, who still needs a sheet? Let me see. Okay, the back row there. Maybe we can get one other person to help. Uh, could we get one other to help there? Because we're going to give out calendars here in a second too. In fact, let's go ahead and give out the calendars. Uh, we'll, we'll take a couple guys helping. That'd be great. Let's give out the calendars now, too. In fact, I think I need a calendar up here, please. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. And if you would, I, I know everybody can read these things on their own, but I'd like to go through this together uh, as we did last year. The Lord blessed last year with over 80 folks coming to Jesus Christ. And I, I'm excited to see what God's going to do this year. I, I'm praying that God will just continue to help us reach out. I believe there are folks that uh, we don't even know their names as of today, but by the end of this year we're going to know their names. There are folks who are going to come to Christ. And, uh, and I want to just be praying that way and directing our thoughts towards that. Who, who, else, needs, uh, who else needs this sheet right here? The one that starts with, uh, says, Seek His face at the top. Second Chronicles 7.14. Miss Rose needs one of those. If we could get one to her, please. And let's keep all the extras on the back table for the folks who weren't able to make it today. This sheet right here. And then who else needs the church calendar? Does anybody else need the church calendar? Okay. Let's look at this sheet right here. Seek His face. Again, that is our thought, our goal for the whole year. We want, we want to make sure we are right with the Lord. That, that's the bottom line. Last year, our theme was growing in grace. Uh, we don't want to just grow numerically without growing personally, spiritually. And this year, we want to seek His face in our entire year. I want to talk very briefly here, first of all, about the 2020 vision. If the Lord Jesus tarries His coming, and we get four more years, if God gives us four years, then these are the things that we are looking for to, to be doing within the next four years. Number one, 
that I would be a full-time pastor. Uh, when we first started this church, uh, we thought it would be seven to ten years before we became full-time at church. And we'll be at six years this year in April. And uh, I still believe God wants us to be full-time. I really do. I believe God wants us to, uh, to use our, our entire lives to reach souls with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, let me say this. Last year we had on our sheet that the church would find a building. Well, God moved that up for us, and we closed on this building in August. So that, that is a huge blessing. And uh, so that, that is a huge, press, a, a huge priority for us with the building. But I believe uh, next thing is that I and my family would be able to go full time. One of the things that we're doing to, towards that step is what we're going to be doing here in the next month or so, and that's us moving here to the church. We're literally moving in. Uh, I think most people know that, but if you don't, uh, if you go down the hall, this building is 16,000 square feet. If you go down the hall all the way to the other end, uh, we're going to be moving into that section that was the fellowship hall, and our goal is not to stay there forever. Our goal is to stay there just to build that much more strength uh, financially for the church, and then in a few years to move out and open that back up again. Uh, but uh, our, our family full-time, I believe that would please the Lord. Number two, within the next four years, a Christian school operating. Uh, there are several uh, options out there, but I think a Christian school is an important thing for children. I really do. My kids uh, have the Abeka curri curriculum, which is the Lighthouse Christian Academy down in Florida, and it's first class all the way, and uh, we want to have a school here at the church that is uh, for the children that will be a blessing and a help for them for growth. So that's something in the next few years. A Bible Institute operating. Uh, there are several adults who've been saved that want to further their education, go deeper into the Word of God and study the Word of God. Uh, I believe it's within the Lord's will in the next few years for us to have that operational. Uh, supporting 10 plus missionaries. Currently we support two. I believe the Lord would have us to add a third this year, uh, but I think in the next few years we should be supporting 10 or more. And so let's just keep that in prayer. Operating four plus buses. Uh, as I've mentioned before, that's an area I just believe God will have us to continue to expand and grow. Uh, the Lord allows us now to operate one bus and one van. And uh, we want to fill those up, and then we want to run more buses. There are people everywhere, everywhere, who would come to church and get saved if we had a ride for them. Truly, they would. And so I encourage you uh, to, to pray about those things. Let's talk about this year in particular, 2016. Number one, that our family moves to Mount Washington. Again, I believe that will happen in the next month. And... I'm going to need some help moving, so I'm going to put that out there right now. Uh, we'll need some help moving, but uh, we're going to be moving in. That'll just uh, free us up to do even more down here. We've been driving back and forth from Indiana for the last six years, and, uh, uh, and my wife spun out today, so I think she's had enough. So we need to move down here. Uh, so uh, pray for that. Number two, we need to continue the renovations and updates in the building. A lot of work's been done in the far end of the building, and uh, we just want to continue that work all throughout the building. Again, there's 16,000 square feet here. There's a huge list of things we could do that will improve this building. Uh, this building is a tool to reach people for Christ. The building's not the church. We are the church. The building's the tool. But I believe it, got, it honors God. We looked at that scripturally. It honors the Lord for us uh, to, to do our best with the building He's given us. And so we should continue the renovations and updates. Number three, this is very important, and I'm going to focus on this uh, most of the time next Sunday. Number three, begin a new members and believers Sunday school class. We already have the, the wheels are turning, the plans in motion for that already. Uh, in the next month or so, we're going to be starting a brand new adult Bible class called the Sword Bible Class. Uh, to this point, I've taught a Bible class in here, and that Bible class, uh, we take a chapter at a time and go through the Word of God. But this class I'm talking about, I believe, is so important, especially, folks, a lot of you have gotten saved here recently. And uh, I believe if you will take part in this class, you will grow leaps and bounds as a Christian. And I understand, uh, when you, you haven't been in church and you get saved and you just start coming, it's all brand new. I understand that. And coming to Sunday school is just another level of commitment. But I want to encourage you to pray about it because I believe you will grow immensely through this brand new members class called the Sword Bible Class. It will focus on fundamental doctrines. It will focus on 
uh, salvation and eternal security and baptism and soul winning and uh, living a holy life and church attendance and all these things that new Christians should know and should be aware of. And so I want to encourage you. Next week we're going to begin signing up folks for that class. Uh, Brother Buster is going to teach that class. And I want to just fill that class up. I really do. I want to fill it up with folks who've been saved recently, or you're a brand new believer. Uh, it'll be cyclical in nature. In other words, it'll, it'll be in a cycle, and uh, you'll be able to come back through it if you'd like to go through it again. And I encourage you to be a part of that class. By the way, that's our goal. Our goal is not just to have a couple classes and stop. Our goal is to keep adding classes. So maybe God's stirring in your heart right now. We just added uh, two children's classes this last year. Maybe God's stirring in your heart right now, and uh, God would use you to teach a Sunday school class. Uh, pray about that if you would. Number four, we want to get a gospel tract or an invitation into every home in Mount Washington. Last year we gave out thousands of tracts here, there, and everywhere. We still want to do that. But this year we want to specifically target all of Mount Washington. We want to cover every home. Now the latest statistic I read was there's about 8,500 homes, uh, homes, apartments, condos in Mount Washington. Uh, 10,000 is a safe estimate. We want to get a gospel track into every home. Next, we want to raise 30,000 towards our goal of 100,000 by May of 2018. God has blessed us. We had our stewardship banquet this last year, and uh, the Lord allowed us to purchase this building. Uh, in 2018, in August of 2018, we'll be seeking a loan from a bank. Actually, before then, but that's when we want to get it done by. We want to raise 30000 plus towards that goal of 100000 by May of 2018. Again, that's for the, for the long-term stability of the, buying the building. And uh, right now, we have a great interest rate. We have, uh, basically, it's around 2%. Uh, every year or every month, our payment is two thousand dollars, and almost twelve hundred dollars of that goes towards principal right now. And so that's a that's an amazing deal God provided for us. And uh, uh, but within three years, uh, as of August twenty eighth, we'll be seeking a different uh, way to finance the building. So be praying about that. Uh, we want to raise that uh, towards that goal. Uh, then begin the master clubs. If there's a tool that will help the children, Sunday school, of course, is so important. But I believe this Master Clubs program will just help the children, the teens, to grow by leaps and bounds. Uh, I grew up with Awana. How many of you know what Awana is, or you grew up with Awana? Yeah, Awana is a great uh, memorization of Scripture. Master Clubs is very similar. It's a, it's a, a, a fundamental Baptist Bible believing program for kids uh, where they can practice uh, the word of they can practice the word of God, memorize the word of God. Uh, learn things that are, are just wonderful for a, ch a child to learn. And so I believe God would have us to start that this year. What that means is this. Every time we talk about starting something, it means that it's going to require workers. It's going to require folks to give of themselves and to say, you know what, I'll give up these couple hours of a week to participate in that. And so pray about that if you would. Maybe God would have you to participate in that. Uh, for all of our children's workers, we have a children and teen safety meeting that we ask everybody to go through who wants to work with the kids. But uh, that's an important uh, ministry that I believe God would have us to start this year. We have that gym. That's a perfect place for the master clubs. Uh, number seven, have 20 plus soul winners out visiting each week. I believe it pleased the Lord. And, and that number each year, I believe, is just going to grow. I believe it pleased the Lord. If there was a great group of us out every week giving out gospel tracts, visiting uh, folks, uh, going to hospitals, going to nursing homes, going door to door with tracts for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, 20 plus soul winners out visiting each week. Pray about that. Maybe God would have you to be one. Number eight, this was on our list last year. This got pushed to a back burner, but we want to get it done this year. Number eight, assemble and distribute a church directory. We've never had a church directory. We want to have one this year. Number nine, Begin supporting an additional missionary. Currently, uh, we support the Guin family to Israel, and uh, we support George Zaris, Christian Radio International. They get the gospel to billions, potentially, of, of uh, folks in the Middle East, Muslim countries, and I believe God would have us just to continue to grow in our missions effort. Number 10, have 200 folks in attendance in our sixth anniversary services. We set that goal last year. We didn't hit 200, but you know what we did? We, got, we had a record attendance on our uh, anniversary Sunday. We had 141. I think we should push for 200 again this year. Let's just push for it, and uh, let's do these things that we're talking about uh, for that goal. Number one, a sign-up campaign. We want to tell everybody about uh, the church and, and about Jesus Christ and get them in. Number two, in every home contact, we need to contact everybody who's ever visited. 
That's a huge effort. We need help to do it. Number three, visit new movers. There are folks who move in each week, and we want to visit them with a gift and a gospel invitation. Uh, number four, gospel flyer saturation. Uh, before Anniversary Sunday, we want to give out 5,000 plus gospel flyers. Number five, update the church website. It's been updated several times throughout the year. We just want to keep growing in that area, updating it. Number six, place an ad in the Pioneer News for the two weeks leading up to the Anniversary Sunday. And number seven, contact all the sign-ups the week before Anniversary Sunday. Growing things are always in transition. We want to keep adding classes, keep adding buses, keep reaching out for Jesus Christ. If you would now, very briefly, let's look at the calendar. And again, I know we can read through these on our own, but I just want you to see the gist of what's here. Uh, of course, today, January the 10th, is Vision Sunday. Uh, coming up in February, there's a couple uh, activities and, and Valentine Sunday. Uh, but uh, our focus throughout all of this is to reach souls for Jesus Christ and to be seeking the Lord's face. March uh, begins our spring campaign. That's when we'll really pull out all the stops to get gospel flyers out to thousands of people. Uh, April, again, we'll have three Saturdays set aside. Well, we'll have breakfast here at church, and we'll go out for a couple of hours on the church bus, and, uh, and you can drive separately as well, give out gospel flyers. Uh, in May, we'll honor our graduates. Mother-daughter banquet, that's going to be a great thing. You'll hear more about that here fairly soon. Uh, Mother's Day uh, in June, June 5th, Promotion Sunday. Folk kids will move up to their new classes. Then the 12th, the 19th, and 26th, numbers of children get saved every year at Kids Crusade. That's like our vacation Bible school. Uh, we used to do it three or four consecutive nights but we realize how hard that is. It's kind of hard on a family. You, your your uh, kids are, are uh, home and you've got to go to work. Then to come back each night made it tough. So we moved it to a Sunday night about two years ago, three consecutive Sunday nights, and I think it's been great. And uh, so we're going to do it again this year, June 12th, 19th, 26th. Uh, June the 18th, we're going to have a father-son fishing trip, and you can adopt a son. You can adopt a dad uh, if you don't have one to bring with you. And uh, just, it's really just about the men and the young men of our church and getting together and fellowshipping. And uh, we'll have time of, of fun and devotion. And I encourage you to be a part of that. Uh, June the 19th, Father's Day. June 25th, our second stewardship banquet. And again, the Lord did great things this year in that. Uh, July 3rd, America's birthday celebration. The teen summer trip. Teens, plan on that right now. Every year we take a trip and we'll go help out a church. This year, uh, 18th through the 21st, uh, is that summer trip. It's going to be a great time of fun, but also a good time of growth for you. I encourage you to come to that. We move right into August with more outreach. September, our second fall revival and our teen rally. Again, this year God gave us several teens saved. Uh, October, we'll begin the fall campaign. November 1st, there's a presidential election. I know that's not the church activity per se, but we need to be in prayer for that. We really do. We need to seek God's face with that presidential election. Uh, then just several other special Sundays there you see. And this year, uh, Christmas falls on a Sunday. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a, an 11 o'clock service. We won't have the Sunday school, but we will have 11 o'clock service. We'll still run the bus and the van. Uh, and then the following week, being New Year's Day, we'll also have an 11 o'clock service. In all of these things, in all of these things, again, I want to challenge you. Participate in as many of these as you can. But our goal this year, we don't want to just be satisfied with checking off things on this list. This will be the greatest year for you ever if you will have personal revival, if you will seek God's face this year. Let's bow our heads together, please. Hi, everybody. This is Tim DeVries, pastor of Vision Valley Baptist Church in Mount Washington, Kentucky. And I want to thank you for watching our YouTube channel today. Our desire is that the world know Jesus Christ as Savior and that in this generation, His people will be faithful, uh, courageous, bold witnesses for Him. I want to say to you, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, God loves you and wants you to know for sure that you have a home in heaven. In order to know for sure you're saved and that you're going to heaven, the Bible tells us we need to know, first of all, that we're all sinners. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because of our sin, we don't measure up to God's glory. God is perfect, but we are not. And sin keeps us out of heaven. Secondly, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. The Scripture says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Revelation 20, 14 and 15 says, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. You're going to spend eternity somewhere. And because of our sin, we don't deserve heaven. Unfortunately, we deserve a devil's hell. But the good news is this, that God loves us. 
And because He loves us, He made one way of salvation. It's not through a church. It's not through a religion. It's not through doing the best works you can do. The only way He made to get to heaven is through His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by Me. And in Acts 4.12, the Scripture says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus came to this earth. He was born. He lived a perfect, sinless life. The Bible says in Romans 5.8, But God commendeth His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus took our place on the old rugged cross. He was crucified, buried, and rose again to pay for our sins. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus today offers you a free gift. That gift is eternal life, heaven instead of hell. And if today you're willing to trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you're willing to call on Him today to save you, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Would you call on the Lord Jesus Christ right now to be your Savior? If you will, He promised He would save you. Feel free to contact us with any questions. We want to help you grow in your walk with Jesus Christ. God bless you.